So this is the Gertduino GERT board. It is essentially an Arduino that plugs directly onto the Raspberry Pi and it lets you control cool things like this. So in this video I'm going to show you how to connect up the Adafruit NeoPixels you can see here. Now if you're not sure what an Arduino is, here's a great video I'd recommend you go and watch. I'll put a link in the description um, and you can have a look at that. We're going to be looking at controlling the AT Mega 328 which is essentially a Arduino Uno. Um, plus it's got an extra couple of push buttons, some LEDs that we can control um, and there's a few other bits on the Gertduino such as the real-time battery and a couple of other types of um, connectors as well which I'm not, not going to go into too much detail. In the description I'll also put a link to the full manual on the Gert board, so, uh, Gertduino that you can read in more detail. One of the first things you need to do when you get your Gertduino is to find the four jumpers and place them on as such. The one on the far left is the reset um, jumper, which you'll see in the manual allows you to control um, what happens when the Arduino resets. Now let's get started. We need to go to um, change into directory slash boot, and then we're going to need to edit a file um, with the nano command called config.txt. And we need to add a line to the top of this config, which will stop the um, Arduino and the Raspberry Pi rebooting um, when we plug them in together, and that's a void um, underscore safe underscore mode equals one because so when you plug in the Arduino it will uh, connect two pins that would normally go into re um, reboot mode and then we need to run the command sudo halt to shut down the Pi. Once it's shut down disconnect it make sure that your jumper connectors are plugged in as such and then you can connect the two devices together and what we're essentially going to be doing by connecting them together is providing power to the Arduino and also we're going to be able to upload um, code, um, compiled C code to um, the Arduino which will allow us to control this device. Um, okay so let's now look at setting up the software um, that we need to control our um, Arduino. So the first thing we need to do is to update our repositories with the command sudo apt-get update and then we need to install the Arduino software so which is sudo apt-get install Arduino which is essentially tools that you need to use to actually be able to um, interact with the Arduino. So the next thing we need to do is we need to change into the directory um, temp. We're going to download some uh, another batch of um, code in the back. So we're using the wget command to talk to the internet and download this code off of um, the website and this code allows us to upload um, the compiled C software to the Arduino but through the Raspberry Pi's GPIO headers. So once we've downloaded that we can run the ls command to see that it's there and we can run use the we can use the command sudo um, dpkg and that long command there to upload the code um, and so actually install the software um, so that it's running. Again like I say all of this will be provided in a link in the description of the video so you've got all the step-by-step -step video um, step-by-step instructions there. And once that's all installed, um, we need to make sure that we run the command um, chmod, which will um, give that whole directory the correct file permissions. And then we have to run this massive command, and if I'm honest, I have no idea what it does. I just know you have to run it. Okay. So we now have installed all of the software we're going to need. Let's get some example code. Change into the directory slash home slash pi. And then again, we're going to run another big um, command, wget command, which is going to drag down from the internet, pull down from the internet, some example code we, um, we're going to try and run. Unzip um, the directory. And in there, there will be a directory called gertduino. Change into there, and there's another directory called blink. So change into the directory blink. And you see there's some um, files there. There are files that are named c .bl uh, blink.c and that is essentially the C code, um, the uncompiled C code. But there's also a file in there called, um, you see there you go, there's all the C code. And there's also a file in there called blink.hex and .hex is the compiled version of code. Now I've just run the chmod command to change the permissions to make the, um, the program program underscore 328 executable and that's the program that actually uploads the compiled .hex file up to the, um, the Arduino. So I'm using the command dot forward slash program underscore 328 and then blink .hex, and the program command will upload that code as it is now to the Arduino and it says thank you that's been done. So plug it all back in again and get it and um, turn it all on and once you run that you will see um, 
the LEDs are blinking back and forth, which is the blink one, and if you press the reset button, it restarts the program and starts from scratch. So if you've stayed with me this far, we now have our Arduino, on our Gertduino essentially, uh, running its first blink program. But what makes the Arduino great is the things that we can connect to on top of that. And now we're going to look at how do we um, get the NeoPixels running. But to understand that, it's useful to understand a little bit more about the standard Arduino world. So what we're going to do is we're going to download the software that you would normally use to program an Arduino. And it should hopefully make a bit more sense as we go on. So just follow me with this. Download the, ID, the Arduino IDE. This is a program that allows you to uh, write code in C and create a compiled.hex file um, for uh, a normal Arduino. So we're going to download that. We're going to run it. This is sped up because it does take a little bit of time. This is all so that we can drive our NeoPixels a bit later on, just in case you're wondering. Now, um, you can just start that program up and you'll see the, I the IDE starts and in there you can just type your code. But before we do that, we need to go to the um, Adafruit website and this is a fantastic um, website uh, that contains everything you're going to need to know about NeoPixels and the different types you can buy and so on and so forth. But further up on the page, they have the Arduino library. And if you click on that, it will take you to um, some dependencies. Dependencies are basically other code you need to make your code work, or a library of code. And this library of code is all the libraries that are predefined to drive the NeoPixels, and basically it takes all the hard work out of it. Stick that in your um, My Documents Arduino directory, and extract that um, library into um, slash document slash Arduino slash library and then you need to rename it to some weird oddity and take out that dash master at the end of it. Um, shut down your IDE and then load it all up again. So close them all down and then load it up again. And this time what you'll notice is that when you go to um supported libraries, at the bottom there you have the Adafruit NeoPixel libraries already preloaded. So now we've set up all of our uh, um, libraries, we want to run some example code. So go to that same directory, but this time with slash examples, and look for strand test, and double click on the strand test um, uh, example. And you can see that all, there's all the code, and you can go through and you can edit that to your heart's de delight. It's pretty simple to understand if you've got some uh, rudimentary programming skills. And top left hand corner there, there's a tick that's highlighted in orange. Click that, and wait on the bottom right hand corner for it to finish compiling and it will have created your .hex file that we can then upload to our Raspberry Pi. Um, however, it's not that easy to actually get hold of the um, .hex files. They are actually stored in the temp directory on your Windows machine. To get to that, you do percent temp percent in run, hit enter, and then quickly search in the search bar in the top right hand corner for .hex, and it will produce all of your hex files. And if you sort um, per um, date modified, so you have the latest ones that have been modified. You'll see at the top there, there's strandtest.cpp.hex. That's essentially the compiled code that we want to get onto our Raspberry Pi. I use WinSCP to transfer that onto my Pi. Um, you can use a USB key or whatever you want. I run up uh, WinSCP and then I'm going to go and I'm going to drag that code um, into the same directory, that blink directory that my other blink example was in. So I quickly just find that code and I just drag that onto my Raspberry Pi. Then I'm going to open up my um, SSH session using the, the program PuTTY and I'm going to go to that um, gertduino slash blink directory. You just log in there and we go, yep, uh, change directory to gertduino blink and in there you can see the strand test.cpp and I'm going to use the um, program underscore 328 to upload that to my um, to my Gertduino. At this point you're going to want to uh, power down so to ensure that uh, when you've uploaded the code and you reboot the device that it doesn't lose it you need to take off that reset pin that third uh, fourth pin on the, on the far right and you're going to need to do that after you've uploaded the code but before you reboot it. Um, the uh, Gertduino, power it all off, and let's have a quick look at some of the NeoPixel options. I have a ring, which is really cool, and you have to solder them up, and there is a power, and a, um, this is a power 5 voltage, a ground, and a 
data link. And I've run out of um, yellow wire for the data, so I've just got like two reds and a black, but I've put a marker on the data line. So the first one I'm plugging in here is the ground vault, which um, is marked on the GERT Duino. And then next to that, we're going to plug in the five volt supply into, I'm using the strip at this point, but the process is exactly the same for the rings. And then on pin six, which is what we're using, I'm going to plug in the data cable. There we go. I'm going to plug in my um, cable and power it up. And now I've uploaded the code, you will see that it will start to run the Adafruit strand test. And you can play around with this and modify the code to your heart's content. Um, and you see that they really are quite bright. You can change the light's intensity and the, the way that the pattern all works and everything. So I understand this video is quite complicated and it's not necessarily for beginners, but the GERT Duino itself isn't uh, the simplest of products. I hope I've simplified um, some of it for you. There's probably lots of questions, so please do put them in the question field. And one of the best places to get support for this is actually over at the raspberrypi.org forum under the GERT Duino section. And actually the developer, GERT Van Loo, generally tends to answer a lot of your questions. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, if you like these videos, please follow me on uh, Twitter, like me on Facebook, and subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Thanks very much.